Now, you may recall in this exercise, I asked you to do all the sine ones, okay? Now that we know cos and tan, it's time to open the doors. Let's have a look at 1b really quickly. Tan theta equals negative 3 quarters, okay? Now, I'll just save you some time right now. 3 quarters is not one of our nice exact value angles, okay? So we're going to get some not 30 or 45 or 60. It's going to be some weird angle, okay? So let me walk through how this is going to arrive at a solution, right? I'm going to go through this same process, right? But I will walk you through nice and slowly. Okay? Firstly, to get my basic angle, like this one, right? 45 or 60, okay? I'm going to use tan inverse because I've got tan here, right? But, and this is a critical thing with this, um, with this technique, put it down if you've got a, uh, a different color, right? To get what we call the, the base angle, the one where I'm like, um, I just take the base angle in the first quadrant, or I go 180, take away the base angle, or 180 plus the base angle, or 360, take away the base angle. To get that angle, you ignore the sign. Okay, I'm gonna write that down and you should too. To get the base angle, ignore the sign. Okay, so in other words, what you're gonna put into your calculator is um, tan inverse, not of negative three quarters, but just three quarters. Tan inverse of three quarters, okay? Now just for the purposes of um, keeping this nice and simple, in fact, I think it's what they ask, let's just do this nearest degree. Don't worry about decimals or, or minutes or anything like that. We wanna focus on the technique rather than the size of the angle. So. Tan inverse. Has anyone already got it? 36 degrees. 36? Oh, 37. 37? We're approximating, yeah? Yeah. 37. That's fine. Okay. So let's just take that as our base angle, right? Now, you look and you say, hold on a second. I want tan to be negative, right? Tan to be negative. So when I look at all stations to central, in which of the quadrants out of the four, where is tan negative? Two. It's going to be negative over here, right? Because sine is positive, so tan will be negative. Uh, and it'll be negative over here. You see that? Because cos will be positive. What is it? It's 40.9. Really? No, it's not. No, what they're doing is tan inverse over 3, 5, 4, like that. Do it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, what have you done? Ah, you're in the wrong angle, my friend. I'll fix your calculator in a second. Uh, I will point out to all of you, um, if you just go to your calculator now yeah, and you go, what do I want? Um, go shift setup. That's on the top row of your calculator, shift setup. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different options there. Three of those options will change the units that you measure degrees in. Just like you could measure a distance in like centimeters or inches or you know meters or whatever, right? So there's different units for measurement of length. There are also different units for measurement of angles. Um, you're in one called gradients, which is a European measure. Crazy Europeans. You want to change it to degrees, okay? Which I think for most of you will be three. Do you see that? DEG for degrees, okay? The other ones will become important, well, in the next couple of years, okay? So if you haven't already put it on degrees. I think 37 is fine, okay? So what am I gonna do with this 37? I want it in the second and fourth quadrants. Second and fourth, okay? So therefore theta will be in the second quadrant, 180 degrees, take away 37. Okay, that's what theta will become over here in the second quadrant, okay? And in the fourth quadrant, it'll be 360, take away that angle. Okay, 360 take away 37. So if I can crunch my numbers well, that should be 143 or 323. Does that sound about right? Yeah? Okay. Now, unlike before when we were testing out our, um, our angles here, okay, because we approximated, if you put in 10 of 143, which I'm going to do right now, and maybe you can do one or the other, right, you're not going to get exactly negative 0 0.75 because we approximated. It's not really 37 degrees. We're off by a little margin of error, okay? But therefore, so should your answer be. It'll be off by a small margin of error. I have minus 0 0.75355. So that's only like three thousandths of a unit that I'm off by. So I'm pretty close. Not a bad approximation. 
Okay. So you can see how I looked. I saw, okay, it's negative. That tells me what to do with the base angle. I put it in these quadrants. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's have a look at C. Let's do C. Okay. Just like before, to get this base angle, the one that I'm going to work with here, here, and here, I'm going to ignore the sign. Um, so that's that minus out the front. So I'm going to go cos inverse of minus, uh, sorry, of positive 0 0.342. Cos inverse of 0 0.342. And to the nearest degree, someone got it already? 70 degrees. 70. That's convenient. Okay, so 70 degrees, that's what I'm going to work with, right? Then I noticed that cos theta is negative. Cos is negative. So which quadrants am I interested in? Is cos negative here? No. Nope, nothing's negative here. Is it negative here? No. Yes, it is, because okay. sine is positive. And then down here, it's also negative, because tan is positive, right? If I went around for completeness sake to this last one, cos is positive, we don't want that. We want it to be negative, okay? So I've got second and third quadrants. Second and third quadrants. So I'm gonna say, it's 180 take away 70, or 180 plus 70. There's the second quadrant angle, there's the third quadrant angle. Okay. 110, 250. Okay. Now, I just want to point out, you remember how we made this argument, we based it on a graph, right? It's like, look, there are my solutions. That's how I'm going to put my working together. If you do this working, Quicker though it is, you have to include your quadrants in there. You have to say something about it. You can draw the diagram, like we have there. If you want to avoid the diagram, um, because you're anti-diagram, you could insert this thing in here, this little bit of working, and maybe you want to put this in now as well as a backup, right? I can say, since, <coughs> excuse me, cos is negative, then instead of referring to a diagram which has a second and third quadrants on it, I just say uh, theta is second or third quadrant. You can see that this sentence is a replacement or a substitute for just having the diagram which illustrates exactly the same point, just visually rather than verbally. Okay? So from here, I'll say that it's in the second and third quadrant and there's my second and third quadrant. Or alternatively, I say, look, there's my diagram, off I go.